Welcome back. In this video, we're going to explore the switch node in any time. If you thought the if node was useful for yes no decisions, the switch node takes it a step further. It's like asking a multiple choice question instead of just yes or no. This node will let your automation workflow choose between multiple paths based on your data. Don't worry, we will keep it beginner friendly with simple language and examples. By the end of this video, you will know what the switch node does, how to set it up, and how to use in a simple scenario. Let's get started and give our workflow the ability to handle many options at once. Think of the switch node as a traffic director that can send your data down one of many different roads, depending on the content of the data. It is similar to an if node, but instead of just two outcomes, true or false, a switch node can have several possible outputs like case one, case two, case three, etc. Plus a default fallback. For a real world, imagine you have a sorting machine for candies. Red candies go in the red bin, blue candies go in the blue bin, green, green candies into the green bin. The switch node does that kind of sorting for your workflow data based on the value or condition. For example, suppose you get a support ticket and it has a field priority that can be high, medium or low. With the switch node, you can automatically route high priority to one branch, medium to another and low to a different path all within one node. Essentially, the switch node routes a workflow conditionally based on the comparisons, supporting multiple output routes. It's like asking what category does this item fall into, and then handling each category separately. This makes your workflow much more flexible when dealing with more than two choices. Let's set up switch node step by step. We'll use a simple scenario to guide the configuration. Drag a switch node into your workflow. By default, N8 and might give a couple of different outputs, often three to start with. You can add or remove output depending on how many different routes you need. Click the switch node to configure it. First, pick the property from your incoming data that you want to use for switching. For instance, if your if a data has a field priority that can be high, medium, or low, we will use that. You may see a field like value one or similar. That's where you might use an. That's where you might put an expression to reference your data, like this. The switch node has a mode setting, typically value or expression. In rules mode, you can set up a multiple rules for each output. Let's say, for output zero, define a rule. For example, high. For output one, define another rule that is medium, and then for output two, low. Basically, you are telling the node what values should go to each output. In our case, we have three outputs expecting exactly those text matches. If you needed more outputs for a more category, you would add them. In the switch node settings under rules, you would typically select the data type and the comparison operator for each rule. For text like priority, choose string, and equal, enter the value to compare it for each output. So output zero rule value high, output one medium, and output two low. This rule means if incoming priority is equal to high, route to output zero. If it's medium, to output one, and if it's low, to output two. There is usually also a default or a fallback option. An output for if none of the rules match, you can enable a fallback output in case the data is something unexpected, like priority was urgent, which we didn't account for. For now, we will assume our data is one of the known values. To make sure it works, run the switch node with some test data items. If an item priority is high, that item should emerge from output 0 to the switch node. And if another item is medium, it should come out of the output 1. Similarly, if low, it should come out of output 2. Now attach whatever actions or node you need to each switch output. For example, for high priority branch, you can you can maybe connect a Slack or email node to alert the team. For medium, maybe add these to normal queue. For low, perhaps no immediate action or maybe just log it. If later you find you need more categories, you can always add another output or rule. Or if a category is not needed, you can remove one. That's how you set up the switch node. It's mostly about defining each possible case and what value sends the data to that case. The interface is quite intuitive once you know what you want to compare. Let's try an example to see the switch node in action. 
Suppose you have a workflow that processes customer feedback and you want to categorize feedback by sentiment. The workflow receives a feedback message and a sentiment analysis tool, tool gives the results. The workflow receives a feedback message and a sentiment analysis tool gives a result, positive, neutral, or negative. You want to handle each tab differently. After getting the sentiment, let's say via an earlier node, you add a switch node that checks the value of sentiment. If sentiment is positive, route to output zero. If sentiment is neutral, route to output one. If sentiment is negative, route to output two. You also add a fallback output just in case if something is off. But focusing on the three main ones. On this branch, you might add an email note to send a thank you note, or maybe add the feedback to a testimony database. Positive feedback could trigger a nice automated response. On output one, perhaps you just log it and send it send it to the general feedback file. Maybe no immediate action, but yet but you store it somewhere. On output two, you might want to alert support web or create a ticket. So you could connect your Trello node or create a Trello card in a customer issues board or a Slack node to notify the support channel. Hey, a negative feedback came in. Please check it out. This branch handles unhappy customers with priority. And if it's unused, if sentiment was missing or something else is mixed, that items goes to the fallback. You could connect to an error handling routine or just treat it as neutral. Now as feedback comes in, a positive comment triggers the positive branch. Your workflow, might, your workflow might send a thank you for your kind words email automatically. A neutral comment might just be recorded. A negative comment triggers the negative branch. A Trello card is made for your team to follow up, ensuring no bad feedback goes ignored. This shows how the switch node can elegantly split one stream of the items into three different pathways in one go. It's like an advanced if not that can handle many cases at once, making your automation smarter and more organized when dealing with categories or multiple conditions. Done. You have learned how to use a switch node to handle multi-way decisions in your N810 workflows. Now your automation can sort and route items into different buckets, which is super helpful for all kinds of scenarios. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to our channel to catch more beginner-friendly N810 tutorials. We have plenty more nodes to cover. If you have any question or you want to share a scenario where you would use a switch node, leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching.